Hi, welcome back to Psychology of Peace Building. Now I'm going to flip back to some of the positive peace building practices, uh, field tested, that can help you in the face of the destructive uh, tendencies that we've been covering. And I'm returning to my model of escalating destructive conflict. Recommended response. First of all, in, in peace building, we must learn to suspend judgment. That doesn't mean we, we never evaluate information. We don't critically analyze and make critical decisions. As you know from my last lecture, we absolutely do that. But when it comes to human beings, what we talk about in conflict resolution and peace building is separating people from problems. We attack problems, we don't attack human beings. And suspending judgment is a practice, not only because it's a humane thing to do, but because a closed judgmental mind actually interferes with quality information gathering and peace building. We cannot understand other people, especially when we're not in a long-term intimate relationship, unless we consciously suspend judgment, give them the benefit of the doubt, and seek to understand them with open minds. Now, I have said, if you can listen with sincere empathy, that's very powerful. Many Californians can. It's a beautiful gift, one that I hope you use to build peace. As much as you possibly can, the world needs your empathy. But if you can't feel sincere empathy for someone, don't fake it. It will backfire with an angry, sensitive, raw human being. But try to show sincere interest, not the cold disinterest that triggered people who had assaulted people. You need to treat them as a human being, right? Do I need to teach this? Wow, it's amazing to me uh, that I need to teach this, but I do. Um, don't, you know, brush them off or ignore them or mistreat them in some way. Show sincere interest. And if you can't do that, really, you're not going to be able to build peace with that person. You're going to need to walk away because unless you're able to extend some of the basics, peace is not going to work. Maybe you need to hire somebody to help you, a mediator to help you build peace. They can offer that. Now, I did introduce you to reframing. Uh, I did, you know, reframing positions to interests, identifying what is most important to the person. If you can do that when they are angry and upset, and even if they have stepped on your toes, offended you a little bit, pricked you. Stay calm and identify what it is they most need, what will satisfy them. That powerfully builds peace. Now, not everybody is interested in peace, right? We know this. There's a lot of bullies, people who, and you know, I don't believe in name calling, but I'm going to have to label the behavior at least. They attempt to dominate and hurt other people. That's the world that they've known. That's how they've been raised. And so we need to learn how to protect ourselves. Um, the last thing, a determined, uh, a person determined to bully uh, wants is a sincere, empathetic listener because it sort of gets in the way of dominating a process. So what you will be introduced to in this class is if you haven't already been introduced to uh, using I statements rather than you statements, I'm uncomfortable with how you're behaving right now rather than you better sit down, right? The, the I statement is something uh, that can powerfully express your boundaries and expectations 
without putting down the other people involved. And a you statement can easily offend. Uh, somebody can get triggered and argue with a you statement for eternity. But I, if I say I'm uncomfortable, you know, nobody can argue with that. It's my experience. I'm owning and asserting, expressing my experience. And so we're, I encourage you all to learn to use I statements with your feelings and your requests with the boundaries that you're asserting. I'd like to be uh, heard without interruption, please. You know, that's start to practice it. It may seem very artificial and false, but with practice, it can become quite natural and comfortable. And, you know, I frankly, in working with angry, conflicted people, have never offended anyone using an I statement. They're so focused on their own selves and their own feelings and needs that I really don't get that much, much attention, right? So I wouldn't worry about that. But I statements are also a powerful way of asserting boundaries. And if you're in a conflict resolution process, those are negotiated boundaries. Everyone has decided together how they want to be treated. So no physical violence, right? No verbal violence. We've all agreed. So the I statement is the way uh, we assert that boundary. Uh, I think we both agreed that we'd rather not scream at each other today, right? And I feel like I'm being screamed at at the moment. Can we, can we go back to what we agreed? Um, if, if you know the people that you are trying to build peace with and understand cannot respect the boundaries that you assert, whether they were agreed to together collectively or they're your individual, then you need to learn how to diplomatically disengage and walk away. Uh, take care of yourself, protect yourself. And I say diplomatically and respectfully because if somebody is really angry and upset and then you disrespect them by just turning and walking out, walking away, uh, that can send them over the top. You know, that can really escalate to a violent situation. You want to be calm and respectful of yourself and the other people involved. So those are some of the tools. Um, you're being introduced to a lot of different tools in this course for building peace. They're all field tested, but you need to figure out which ones work best for you. Good luck with that this week.